Welcome into the Dad Verb Podcast. Topics around parenting from the lens of a dad. Hey, everybody, and welcome into another episode of the Dad Verb Podcast. Switching it up a little bit this week. So we are missing Andrew 2, but we have Andrew number 2. And special guest Chris, aka Prince Bougie, member of our Discord and uh, previous guest podcaster. And today we're going to talk through a couple of different things. So first of all, we are doing our first uh, like live Q and A from our Discord, which we're really excited about. But we don't know if the word actually got out there, so we'll see if anybody actually joins us for the live Q and A. Perfectly okay because we're also going to talk about. It's summertime. There's a lot going on. Maybe you guys have friends with pools. Maybe you have community pools. But let's talk about what it means to bring kids to the pool. Everything that goes with it. The good, the bad, the ugly, the fun, the not so fun. We're going to talk about it. Uh, But first, we need to go through and do our sick check. So since we have a guest, Chris, kick us off. You get the honors of uh, checking in on you. How is everybody? Is everybody healthy? Everybody's doing really well, actually. I mean, I got a little... Sinus thing, but I think it's just allergies. I went to a doctor, like, yeah, it's not an infection. You're good. It's just allergies. So I'm on some steroids, but other than that, family's good. Awesome. Family's healthy. What about you, Andrew? Nah, I'm good. Um, kids are all good. I mean, the, the biggest thing I got to a, to a sickness is sunburn, right? This, uh, <laughs> on this pool topic, you know, yeah. that, that's uh, two year olds in the pool make for excellent question mark life choices. Yeah, I managed to uh, give myself get a little sunburn the other day too. just literally just walking from our house to the park and back, which is in our neighborhood. (laughs) And I came back and like, I I don't get a lot of sunburns like I get generally get like a really nice tan during the summer. But I had the shoulders exposed for the first time. And man, I came home and they were red just from being out for I mean, maybe half an hour, 45 minutes, something like that. Um, yeah, on our end, everybody's healthy. Daughter's a little boogery, but you know, not too bad as, as, as far as, you know, sickness generally goes, if we're going to be boogery, that's about as good as it gets, right? No fever, no issues. Wife's good. Kids are good. I'm good. I think we're now, is that two episodes in a row that everybody's healthy? I believe so. Yes. I think we've passed All right. two. We'll see if we make it to three. <laughs> awesome. And just going to come back and be like, the whole family's sick. Yeah, everybody's <laughs> sick. Uh, yeah, it'll, it'll be over. It's room the street. We all got swine yeah. flu or something weird. Anyway. All right. So, and Saunders, I'm going to have you keep an eye out and see if we get anybody in the chat. Yep. But let's go ahead and kick it off with our topic. So, uh, we, uh, you guys may not know this. We have a little text message chat that goes back and forth with all the podcast hosts here. And that's how we kind of figure out what we're going to talk about for the week, whether we, you know, run into issues, have funny stories, find articles that we want to talk about. And in this week's text thread, Saunders brought up kids and the pool, right? It's summertime. We might be going to the beach. We might be going to the pool. Going to the pool without kids. When I brought it up, like I I was there going, this is a great topic. Like said, There, there is a wild difference between Going to the pool when you don't have kids, where you can relax, maybe have a drink, hang out, enjoy the sun, enjoy your friends, enjoy the company. And then the experience of having kids at the pool. And right. what about you? Like, so Andrew, I'm going to start with you. You were just at the pool when you sent that message. So what, what prompted you to start the discussion about kids at the pool? Okay, okay so I'm in a small town. Um, like, I think the whole town has less than 3,000 people in it. So we have a community pool. And it is the social gathering place from Memorial Day till Labor Day, basically. Um, That being said, we bought a pool pass so that we Mm -hmm. can all get in because five bucks for admission, although it might sound cheap to everybody when you go 20 times a year, all of a sudden it wasn't that cheap. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So I'm dragging the two-year-old, the one-year-old. I've got my, my mother in tow. And then we have my two first cousins once removed. So my cousin's kids with us. Um, and we have to watch a two-year-old and a one-year-old. Okay. Like four, four adults or at least half adults at this <laughs> pool. Um, we get in and, and my girls had never been in anything but like a splash pad. Right. So mm-hmm. it was simply just first time in a real pool. Um, so I grabbed the, 
the baby. I'm like, hey, 14 month old, let's go, right? She's in her swimsuit because you do that ahead of time. Do not try and change your kids in those dressing rooms of doom like that. Set them up ahead of time, change them out of their wet stuff, go back in the car. Like that, that's my first piece of, oh God, that was a mistake. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then into the pool. Lo and behold, the 14 year old does not think an 85 degree pool is a lot like a bath. So she is not having a good time almost immediately. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. And you know, that chill that you get as an adult, when you like pop out and you're like, Oh, it's cold. It's nice. Yeah. Apparently kids don't enjoy that as much as uh, adults do. (laughs) And at 20 pounds, they get colder a lot faster. I, who knew? Right. Um, anyway, so that was kind of like the first, uh, oh, this isn't going to be as fun as I, I dreamed as a dad. The Mm -hmm. second, uh, oh, was the two year old loved running into the water but she didn't know when to stop. And so she basically would walk in until she was drowning and then not know what to do (laughs) to turn around and leave. Right. So she's like, the water is hitting like her bottom lip and she's just like, (coughs) because she hasn't learned to close her mouth. Right. And so that was a fun, like you can't go much further than this line. The our pool's cool. So they have like a one foot line, a two foot line and a three foot line, like painted Mm -hmm. on the bottom in bright colors Mm -hmm. so that you can see them. Um, Oh, nice. So she learned she can go to the yellow line, but not the red line. Um, and then it was, oh, I didn't bring floaties because, you know, $100 worth of pool gear wasn't on my list, apparently, for birthdays at two. So that was a fun, like, uh-oh, Amazon trip. And the last thing, and this is what prompted me to send the text, was I was the only man at the pool. There were adolescent Hmm. boys, like 13, 12-year-olds. There was one male lifeguard. Everything else was moms, grandmas, babysitters, college students, playing nanny, little kids. I I was it. And I I just looked around and I went, okay, now this this just feels like I shouldn't be here. Like, this feels like a, uh uh-uh, dude. You're the, you you don't belong. You're in a club and you're not supposed to be there. Yeah, like how they get in the VIP section. Yep. And then everywhere I looked, right, after I made that realization, it was scantily clad women who were not my wife. And I was just like, okay, this, nope, I gotta, I gotta solve this problem. (laughs) Right. And so (laughs) it just became very much like, I gotta focus on the kid. I gotta, anyway, Mm -hmm. pool is not fun as an adult father. That's, that's that's what I got out of my, it's a lot of work. It's way more stressful. A lot of work. work. A lot of anxiety. You go home, you take a nap. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) What about you, Chris? So have have you made it to the pool yet? So last year we made it to the pool. um, But this year, now that my son's older, and now we have a a daughter too, four-month-old, we haven't made it to the pool yet because it's like, when it was just him, it's it's easy for us to, you know, double-team him. Or if a parent needs to take a break, but that one too, mm-hmm. it's a lot harder. Yeah. But we actually went to a birthday party and we showed up. We didn't even think this through, but he rented this giant pool slide. Mm-hmm. Inflatable pool slide. I was like, yeah, well, yeah. first of all, I wish he told me that because he wasn't prepared, but whatever. We uh, borrowed some swim pants. Mm-hmm. Said, hey, go play. Well, there were a bunch of kids older than him. Just, just crazy. They just like put mm-hmm. the slides, head down, crashing each other. He was like, "Nope, nope, 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 nope." <laughs> mm-hmm. that's, that's, just... that's our extent of the pool goes right now. And yeah. Just like, no, these kids are too big. Didn't want anything to do with it. Nope. D- didn't want to play. But well, one thing I... I did notice is like when these kids were playing, sometimes they get you know, knee in the face and all that. Mm-hmm. And like, no. I was like, hey, what would I do with this uh, situation where another mm-hmm. kid like just slide into my kid? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. The, yeah. The I mean, there's I not noticed, much you can do about it. Yeah. <laughs> the thing I noticed about the other little kids was they were all curious, right? So like, mm-hmm. I'd be playing with my daughter, and like a three year old little girl would just swim up in her little floaty, and she'd just be hanging out, like staring at us, right, mm-hmm. while we were playing, and it was like, wait, what? I can't like shoo you away because that seems mean, 
<laughs> but I also can't be like, can I help you? Because you yeah, don't understand you're also English. Not responsible yet. Like, for them. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. You don't. You uh, don't want to claim responsibility for the kid that's showing up, or like do something right. that you know the parent isn't going to be okay with. Um, yeah. But you know, you also don't want to give them the impression that they're never welcome anywhere outside their their little <laughs> bubble, right? Because right. I think we talked in another episode about the idea of losing like community child rearing. Um. And that's kind of the thing. It's like, how do you balance between like, well, I'm not really responsible for keeping your kids safe, but you know, if they're in my, my bubble, then I kind of am like, I got to make sure they're okay. So that, uh, you know, and especially when you get in a situation like a pool where, you know, there's a high chance of something going wrong. Uh, if somebody's not watching that kid, like now they're kind of my responsibility. Like, at least that's the way I look at it. If they're in my zone, they're sort of my responsibility to at least keep an eye on if they, you know, if they go under to drag them back out. If they're in my lunge and lift zone, they're my responsibility. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. 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 That's, that's a fair assessment. And that's, that's one of the, that's one of the big things too. Like I think you both touched on, right. Is like being prepared. And, and one of the things I want to talk about is like the, the idea that going to the pool involves a lot of preparation. Like there's not just a let's grab our stuff and go to the pool. Like it's not a quick thing. And so, you know, we have two kids and for us to go to get ready to get all of our things to go to the community pool, which is, I mean, less than, you know, a quarter half mile from our house in the neighborhood is probably 45 minutes to an hour of just getting things together, making sure swimsuit, swim diapers, sunscreen, uh, all their pool toys, snacks while you're there because there's nowhere to get food, yeah. um, water, sun hats, water, uh, you know, oh, making yeah. sure that they're good to go. Make Does everybody have their Crocs or their flip-flops on? Uh, do you have extra stuff? Yeah, did everybody Before. go to the bathroom? Absolutely. And the, the process of just getting past? to the pool. Yeah. Yeah. The, <laughs> the process of just getting from the house to the pool, then loading everyone up in the car to get down to the pool, to unload all your stuff, find a spot, hopefully that's not in right. the sun where your kids aren't going to bake. Um, and then, you know, semi enjoy the pool while, you know, you're getting splashed by other kids, your kids getting splashed by other kids, and you're just trying to enjoy the water. So it's a completely been, different experience. Oh, I yeah. left out my favorite part. The half an hour of buttering sunscreen onto your kid from Why that zinc just, stick. Like, right? Because <laughs> yeah. yeah. they're fighting you away. Oh, my God. And you're mm-hmm. rubbing them down with this uh-huh. jumbo-sized chapstick. <laughs> like, you gotta go. It reminds me of the episode of Bluey, where Ben took kids to the pool, and he totally oh, got all Wildly unprepared. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they're like, well, we just got to stay in the shade, and then all of a sudden there's just like this little puddle of shade in the corner, and you know, none of them can leave. I think they end up having to call mom to bring all their pool stuff because they can't get yeah. it. It's like they can't get out. They can't get out of the shade. They can't do any of those things. And that's, that's oh. the thing, right? Like being in the pool is not relaxing anymore. Like we, we took a beach trip recently too, and it's the same thing. The beach used to be a respite. It used to be an escape where you go to the beach, you enjoy it. And we still enjoy it. We like having the kids there and having that experience. But you're so much more aware of what can go wrong and like keeping it out, you're constantly having to, you know, look around, stay vigilant, make sure that, um, you know, make sure that nothing is happening. They're not getting too close to the water without supervision or, you know, running off or throwing sand at people and sort of, you're having to stay, keep them contained in some way, shape or form. Um, so one of the, one of the things I always say is like, usually when we ever go to the pool, it's either we'll go to the community pool with people we know so that we can group watch the kids, right? Because people will take turns. Like the dads will kind of go in and take turns and make sure, you know, the kids are okay for a while, then another one will switch in and then we'll switch in and out. Or the best is that some of our neighbors that we're really close with put in a beautiful pool in their backyard. And so there are two houses up from us. And every now and then we get that text message that says, hey, we're going to be outside of the pool. You guys want to come over? Perfect. There's like a big tanning ledge. We know everybody there. The other neighbors come over. Everybody's watching everybody's kids. You know, it's a, it's a whole different experience where you can actually sort of relax for a couple of minutes um, because you do have that support network, which is what I think makes, yeah, it makes it hard at the community pool if you're going just as your family unit. Like you said, 
you know, somebody's kid might float up to you and you're like, well, am I responsible for them now? Cause you know, you don't have other people who are there right. taking care of them. And so is there anything that you guys have done or tips that you have that help make other could make other people who have not experienced the chaos of going to the pool, make their experience any better? Oh yeah. Like this, this one hands down. Um, I went to Bass Pro Shop, Cabela's, Shields, whatever your local one is. Go to the fishing section and get yourself an Under Armour wet wicking fishing shirt with long sleeves. And the reason I say that is because you can wear it in the pool. It's really comfortable. It's water soluble. It's basically like the little kid's long sleeve swimwear gear um, for adults. Mm -hmm. And it saves guards. me. Yep. It saves me twenty square feet lathering up with sunscreen on myself, <laughs> right? Um, and my the one I got has a hoodie, so I can like throw that up over my head if I if I feel like this part's getting a little roasty. Mm -hmm. um, and I like that is one of the things. Not only do I buy like all the all my girls' swimsuits have long sleeves, right? Mm -hmm. They've got tops with long sleeves. Um, the, what do they call them? Swim. They, there's a word for the. Swim rash shirts. guard yeah, yeah rash guard rash yeah rash guard yeah and so buy rash guards yep they're expensive yep you're gonna go through them one a year because your kid grew but it saves your sunscreen bill mm -hmm. and i mean they're easy to get on and off your kid they dry out pretty quickly like that was the other thing i noticed my two-year-old when she's wearing one i can basically put one of those microfiber quick wick towels on her and mm -hmm. the rash guards basically dry and she's warm almost instantly, right? Mm -hmm. Because we can dry her off real quick. Um, so that was that was one of the big ones. And then the modern floaty things are amazing. I don't I don't know if you remember like a few years ago they did the like built in loop around the waist and that thing was effectively a death trap for children. Yeah, they were terrible. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Whoever awful. designed that was not thinking about that. But the new ones are water wings with a built-in life mm -hmm. vest and then Ooh. the ones i got my yeah. girls actually have a crotch a crotch strap strap mm -hmm. so um it's a five point harness with water wings and there's no flotation on the back so they mm -hmm. can't actually lay on their faces so like if they get yeah, it'll going, always put them in the right position it, it kind of always pops them up and if they start flapping they're almost immediately on their back just kind of like what do i do um which was like a little breath of relief as a dad at a swimming pool with two kids who haven't had swim lessons yet. Right? So, mm -hmm. That gives anyway. you a little more comfort. What about yeah. you, Chris? You you said you've only done the pool kind of once with your two once. kids, but um, yeah. have you have you done it at all with just your your older one? I did. So I signed up sign, uh, swim lessons. Uh, there's this school called Goldfish Swim Lessons. We did it a lot mm -hmm. last year, and um, a lot of things they teach you is just to have them get comfortable. Like, you just got to yeah. keep on doing it, get them comfortable, play with flotation devices, like those flotation toys, like balls and stuff. Yeah. And um, just keep full water in their heads. And it's mm -hmm. just all about comfort for them. Like, yeah. So, yeah, that's, but, that's a really good point. But one thing I didn't realize, so we bought swim diapers for him. Mm -hmm. They only catch poop. They don't really <laughs> catch the poop. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Learn that the hard way. Yeah, so they uh, what I always do swim is diapers are the, only poop catchers for only sure. Only poop catchers. Just, just keep that in mind. So, what I do is I put him in a swim diaper, and then I put a regular diaper over that mm. before we head out. Oh yeah, yeah. So you have your swim diaper on, and then the regular diaper mm -hmm. over, and, and then, then you, you just take it off. Yeah, take it off, and then toss it in the pool. Yeah. <laughs> that makes like, sense. Wait, I'm confused. Doesn't the regular diaper just like expand the minute you hit the pool? Like, <laughs> like just you know, weigh them down. <laughs> no. Like putting cement shoes Opposite on your toddler. Of, right. Uh, rotation device. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's. I mean, you guys hit on the the good stuff, right? Like, you know, investing good rash guards. Uh, long sleeve bathing suits are super helpful. Good floaties are really helpful. Um, having more than just the, the two parents at the pool, if you can, uh, you know, get some aunts and uncles or some good friends that'll want to go to the pool with you and, uh, you know, play with your kids. That's always super helpful as well. Um, you know, one of the things that, that you touched on Chris is like around swim lessons. Um, and I know that's something we've done for, for our toddler. Um, I think a lot of parents are, 
either don't do it, don't think about it, or are maybe nervous about doing swim lessons. And and one of the things we found that um, that you pointed out is the kids get better in the water the more comfortable they are, mm-hmm. and the less comfortable they are, it's it actually is more. Uh, it feels more dangerous, right? Because they're, they're going to kick a little bit more. They're going to struggle a little bit more. Um, and so I I know we've done swim lessons with our oldest. We haven't done with our youngest yet, but it's something that we do plan to do. Um, we're a little hesitant on like the infant self rescue stuff. If you guys have seen any of that, cause it it seems really brutal. Um, they just like <laughs> throw your infant in the pool and hope they float. Basically. Um, I'm, I'm sure people are going to come for me in the comments. I'm sure there's a lot more to it in there than that. If you happen to be an ISR instructor, let us know. Cause I don't know much about it. I've only seen what it looks like. And from a parent's point of view, it looks horrific. Um, but you know, regular swim lessons at your local Y or your local swim school are always good, um, for just keeping your kids generally safe and comfortable in the water. Um, so when you do get into community pool type situations where there's a lot of kids splashing around and they're getting water in their face or over their heads, it's not as scary of a situation as it would be normally. I'm planning on doing them. I mean, I, I want, I want. Paige, our oldest, to be potty trained mm-hmm. first. So when she's potty mm-hmm. trained, then she can do swim lessons, right? I'm not going to throw, and that might be a rule at the pool that I have to check, but it's one of those, like, I'm not going to throw some some lifeguard in the responsibility of, not only do you have to keep my kid from drowning, but if they happen to poop their pants, mm-hmm. that's on you too, bro, right? Like, that's just... <laughs> you got to go fish it out. You know, yeah, yeah, just well, not not a thing. Um what the, you triggered me, Ben, and I was going to bring something up, and then I forgot about it because we were talking about swim lessons. Now I don't remember. It'll come back to me at some point. No, no worries. I do the same. Do they swim, though? They have, they have the best snaps afterwards. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The juiciest snaps after yeah. cold day. It's oh, so you're great. like two, three hours. They're asleep. Yeah. They're just out oh. cold. Like my son, he's a great sleep at night. Terrible mm-hmm. nap. Just horrible never, like 30 minutes tops. But after uh, swim lessons, for two, three hours, it's awesome. <laughs> it's just gone. Yeah, we're, we're unfortunately like, hitting that age where our, uh, our oldest is getting past his midday nap. So we, oh. we no longer have a break. So we used to have that, yeah. you know, that midday break. We're like, all right, they're at least going to be down for an hour. So we started doing um, a mandatory like relaxation time. So somewhere in the middle of the day, he either gets to, you know, watch a movie, watch a show, go in his room and, you know, use his Tony box and listen to some stories, which sometimes leads to a nap. But yeah, it's uh, we have swim days are the days that we get naps. But other than that, we are now we're now into the uh, I don't have a nap and I'm going to be insane by 530. Uh, and just absolutely losing my mind. So swim days are are super welcome. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, so I'm like thinking. So I'm talking about experience where I just have my son, but now I have my daughter. What what more press preparation do you have to do to take both your kids to your pool? Well, first, it's not zone defense anymore. <sighs> yeah, you're on you're on man defense. Like it's one yeah. on, one adult, one kid. Um, so it requires two humans. To take care of two kids, uh, that was my first big lesson. Well, yeah, it's else? just uh, double the work. Basically, <laughs> it's double the work, double the stress. It's still fun. Um, oh yeah, you know, once once you like, it, it's tough to say. So, like, our son did take swim lessons, but he's not a. I wouldn't call him a swimmer, right? Like, he's not just going to take off and swim on his own. Um, and so it it is still watching everybody, making sure everybody's good, making sure because he'll he's at that age where he, he'll try to do too much. Um, and so you really got to kind of watch him because he does like to, you know, jump in and, and do this, that and the other. And you kind of have to learn his limits and what he's OK with and what scares him and kind of know when he's approaching that level. Uh, you know, the excitement overrides the fear and then he goes and does something that he really shouldn't or goes too far um, or kind of, you know, comes off the edge of the tanning ledge. It isn't really paying attention, but yeah, it's a, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work for sure. Are your kids daredevils? Mike, I mean, 
I already told the story about the two-year-old just walking straight into the deep end. She mm-hmm. saw the diving board and was like, I'm doing that, and started heading that direction. And I was yeah. like, no, you are not doing that. Like, Actually, our pool has a floaty requirement. So if like your kid can't swim, they can jump off the diving board. If you're in the mm-hmm. water below the diving board and they're wearing a life jacket, which I was like, that seems a little crazy, but okay, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, but my two-year-old is this far from leaping off the the tanning edge into the three foot pool into dad's mm-hmm. arms like no questions she's yeah. she's done it a couple times and like the the lack of fear it's the first time i've really acknowledged that she has a lack of fear that's mm-hmm. that's bigger than my own but the other thing and and when you were saying this ben it it, it reminded me are you guys riskier with your kids at the pool than your wife or the other mm-hmm. ladies around you want to be? And and here, I'll bring this up. I'll tell you where it came from. So my two-year-old's walking, right? Zero entry pool. So I'm mm-hmm. letting her walk run between about 18 inches, two feet of water and zero back and forth. And I'm just keeping an eye on her, right? And my mother is probably six feet to my right, holding the 14 month old in Mm -hmm. 18 inches, two feet. Like she's just hanging out playing with her. Right. And I'm, and we're both watching the two year old run and she stumbles and she falls and face plants right into the water. Right. Mm -hmm. And my mom's like, no. And I'm like, leave her alone. Let her get up. Like, right. And the two year old Mm -hmm. gets up and she kind of, (laughs) yeah. And off she goes. Right. And you could just see like, like I was fine. I mm-hmm. knew it was going to happen, but my mom was like, she's going to drown. And I'm like, she, she needs to learn. Like, have you guys done the same thing? Had similar experiences? Or am I just the crazy dad who's like, don't kill yourself. Have a nice day, kid. Yeah, no, I, it's, um, I think it depends. It depends on your, your, you know, your appetite for risk. Uh, <laughs> but, but a lot of times um, with, so with our youngest, so our second, she her only example of another kid besides the kids at daycare is her brother who's two and a half years older than she is right he's bigger stronger more coordinated by far you know has a lot more experience than she does doing everything but she wants to keep up with him and so just in general she's trying to do everything that he does including you know when we're at the pool um she's not she's much more cautious at the pool than she is anywhere else but if if he's climbing something she's climbing something if he's running she's trying to run behind him if he's kicking a ball she's kicking a ball um so i think it's it's not going to be very long before she tries to keep up with him at the pool and there are going to be times where when i see it i'm like you know you gotta kind of let her go because there are times where she climbs on something and unless it's truly dangerous i'll let her do it and then just allow her like she's fallen down a few times, you know, she's fallen off her. There's a little um, we have the the like the Lalo kids table with the two chairs. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and you know, they're not super tall, but she loves to stand up and she stands up in her high chair. She stands up in this chair. and We're always telling her to get down. And finally, you know, one day she stands up in that chair and I was like. I'm just going to let her be. I'm not going to tell her to get down. And then if she falls, she's, she's okay. She's not high enough where she's really going to get hurt, but she's high enough where it's going to scare her and maybe she won't do it again. And she'll kind of have to learn. Um, And I think that's going to be the same way with the pool is like, she's going to do some stuff that's probably beyond her capabilities, but she'll learn what her limit is. And then she'll, you know, push it a little further next time, a little further next time and figure that out. And, and just, FYI, the rule of thumb, even though it's a very bad expression, uh, <laughs> your kid should not fall from a height taller than they are. So if your kid is 24 inches, if their feet are 24 inches off the ground and they fall, you should probably get a like doctor look up, make sure they don't have a concussion, yada, yada. So, right, that's, that's the rule of thumb. Talk to your pediatrician mm-hmm. about the actual rules. But it's if they fall from a height taller than they are, they might have a head injury. You should check it out. Anyway, yeah. for me, and told like, the great falling story. <laughs> <laughs> See, for me, I'm like I, I like to kind of push it, push his limits a little bit, you know, but not too, to the point where like he feels still feels safe. 
Yeah. Like, uh, one of the uh, drills at the uh, uh, swim school was to kind of dip their head underwater just a little bit, just up to your nose, and then pick them back up, just so they have that. They understand that sensation of like holding their breaths, hold holding their breath. Like they tell us, make sure you blow in his face and then dip him so that he yeah. will close his mouth. Right. And so I've been doing that. For me though, is I just don't like other kids getting too close to my kid. <laughs> yeah, that's why. That's where. That's where I'm like, okay. That's where I'm get scared. That's where I get anxious. I'm like, all right. I don't know what this other kid's yeah. doing, but uh, shoot, go away. <laughs> Yeah, they get in that bubble. Uh-huh. You're, you're yeah, like the I, tight end protecting the quarterback. Like, no, yeah, you're what? Yeah. yeah, push them off. <laughs> right. Well, here's the thing. I think I think the bottom line of all this, right? Being at the pool in the summertime is used to be a lot of fun. Still, is a lot of fun. Different kind of fun. You are never going to be as prepared as you want to be to take your kids to the pool. It's going to take you longer. It's going to take more effort. It is worth it to see them having a ton of fun probably not going to go as much as you want until they get a little bit older. But I think we've uh, shared some really good tips here tonight. I think some good stories. Um, And it's nice to know that everybody's going through the same pool crisis (laughs) that we all are every time we leave the house. Uh, Chris, I know you got to run Andrew. I think that's a good place to wrap it. Um, What do you think? Any final thoughts before we close out? I wish more of the uh, community had joined us with their magical questions, but we'll give them more notice next time. And and the other thing I would say is adult swim is not adult swim. Okay. It's more like every kid gets a potty break and you're still working. Okay. There <laughs> oh, yeah. No it's a work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. when I went to the beach the first time, I, I loaded a bunch of books on my Kindle. Didn't even get, didn't even get to open my Kindle. <laughs> No, oh, you had a lot of high hopes. You oh, leave yeah. that Kindle at home. Like, uh, there are yeah. no yes. electronics at the pool. Like <laughs> the idea of opening your phone, don't even bother. Doesn't happen. Don't even bother. Nope. Doesn't. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of the Dad Verb Podcast. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, you can follow us all on Instagram or follow us at Dad Verb Podcast or join our Discord. And as always, if you're looking for courses on fatherhood, you can go to the Dad Verb website and join the Father Figured course with courses from babyhood, infancy, all the way through year one. Thank pregnancy. you guys for joining us. What's that? Pregnancy. Oh, pregnancy. It's yeah, pregnancy that's right. Through pregnancy year one, through on year now. one. See, I messed up the hook. I never have to deliver this part. Thank you guys for joining us. We appreciate it. Always, uh, you know, give us a review. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you thought of the episode as it helps us come up with content for the podcast. And we'll see you on the next one. Peace. Thanks, guys.